Well, look, it's something none of us want to think about, but during this pandemic, healthcare and legal professionals say it is crucial to have a plan in place if and when there is a shortage of medical supplies. So the question is, who gets the life-saving tools and who does not? And WJZ is live tonight. Rachel Manitoff explains how a Maryland Ethics Committee is answering these agonizing questions. Rachel? Denise and Rick, these are terribly difficult questions, and experts in this field created a set of guidelines in the event hospitals do have to ration their supplies. They say these are really important for doctors and frontline workers and doing what they can to minimize avoidable deaths. 522 Marylanders have been hospitalized at some point with COVID-19, but Governor Hogan says he's most concerned about a surge of people needing hospital attention all at once. If we don't flatten this curve and, and too many people get sick at the same time, that we don't have enough ventilators, we don't have enough personnel in our hospitals, and we don't have enough ICU beds and emergency rooms to handle that. This is exactly the dilemma that members of the University of Maryland Ethics Committee Network are grappling with. This is a group that provides training and resources to hospitals and nursing facilities and is also responsible for the decision making in the event that hospitals run out of staff or supplies. Hoping for the best and prepared for the worst. So nobody wants to have to make those decisions. It's agonizing for people whose code of ethics is to help people to have to make a choice like that. In 2017, a report was created following the H1N1 flu pandemic to spell out how supplies would be rationed in the event that there's just not enough to go around. When we have these kind of catastrophic health emergencies, then the standard of care is altered so that uh, physicians can treat those who are most likely to survive. At the direction of the governor, a triage system would be implemented across all Maryland hospitals. The triage team would score patients, first looking at their organ functions and chances for short-term survival. Next, they would look at whether the patient can survive longer than 12 months. Someone with a terminal illness or pre-existing condition may not fall into this category. And if there was ever a tie, then age would be the next factor, with anyone 49 and younger given priority. In reality, when we look at what's happening in New York and other states, I think we need to be prepared for that. One other thing, these experts say it's really important right now, especially for people in long-term care facilities, to let your loved ones and to let your doctors know what you want to do if you become sick with the virus. For example, do you want to be placed on a ventilator or have other interventions done? We're live in Baltimore tonight. I'm Rachel Menatoff for WJZ.